Hey guys, today we're gonna to look at drum bus compression, the settings that I like to use, how much is too much, and a couple other things about my mixing template. One of the things that came up recently about my mixing template video that I did um, was why don't you just use a project template? And for me, it's just a little bit easier to, uh, to do it from inside of Reaper rather than managing um, doing the file management first or, um, or not being able to like merge a project that's already ongoing. So like your recording session, you want to turn that into a mix session, just right click, import the template, and then move some tracks around. For me, it just saves some, some steps to do it that way. Now, the other thing is how do you get the tracks into your template? For me, that can be one of two different ways. So we go to a new project here, an empty project. Let's even take out this track. And I just go to my audio files folder that I have already set up for this project. I'll just drag and drop into Reaper and put them on separate tracks. And then I'll just right click and insert track from template, go to my mix track, uh, mix template one. All those tracks come in and then I can just uh, select these tracks. Uh, they kind of got split up a little bit because of the way the tracks were selected, but I can just cut those, select my drum bus track, paste, and now they're inside of my drum bus. So, so yeah, that's how I would do it, starting from an empty project. Let's delete those. But if it was, if you started out with a project like this, where you just have your template, um, I would drag into an empty area of the track control panel put it on separate tracks, and again, select them, cut, and paste into the folder. From there, you just organize like the kick, it's usually at the very top, snare and snare bottom followed. After that, then I like the hi-hats, then the toms, overheads, and etc. That's how you do the import, um, whether you do it in advance of the template or after the template. Either way, it works great. The other thing is how do you do the reverbs or how do you manage the, the parallel effects? So let's say I want the snare to go to the reverb one. I can drag the routing button to the destination track if there's enough room. Yeah, and now I've got a send on there. If I'm in the mixer, I don't often have enough room to, to see both the snare track and the reverb track. It just doesn't fit. So what I can do is right click the routing button on the send track, the sending track, go to sends and then choose a track like reverb three. I'll just alt click to delete those, or I can go to the destination track, the reverb track, right click on the routing button and choose receives from here's the snare. And then if I open this window up, I have all the settings there. I can change it to pre-fader, post-fader whatever. And once you have one send set up, it's easy to just drag and drop. Um, no mo modifier required. You can just drag and drop and you can copy all the settings from one send to another track. So that's just a little addendum to the uh, mixing template video that I did a little while ago. Uh, the one other thing that I forgot to put in here was the percussion track. So I should also have a track called percussion. It's gonna be a folder and any like bongos, tambourines, things like that will go into that folder as well. And I'll just, um, yeah, I'll just put in an EQ and a reverb or a, a tape saturation again, and then I'll save that as a update to my template. So in this project, I have some drum tracks imported. I've done a kind of a rough drum mix pretty quick uh, so let's hear it. Let's first show only the drum tracks. I'm gonna bypass any sends that I have. Okay, and let's also bypass any effects, including the master effects. So here are the drums as they were recorded. Let's hear it just by putting the master effects on and see how that changes the mix. Okay. 
it's not a big change, but kind of like when you have all the tracks together, um, the bus compressor on here is just doing a little bit, but it's it's going to tighten everything up just a little bit, kind of keeps the levels from getting out of hand. Uh, you can kind of push the levels into that a little bit and it pushes back uh, in a good way. So now let's just do the drum bus. I haven't changed any of the plugins in the chain. This is all saved into my template. So just playing back the drums through this chain, it, it sounds pretty good. So right off the bat, the drums feel bigger. There's more smack. It's inflated, right? And it was a lot less work to do it in my template than to go through the indiv individual tracks and, and try to do that. So we're sort of doing a top-down mixing approach. We got effects on the mastering bus and on the drum bus. And then from there, we tweak things and um, get it cleaned up further with individual EQ and compression and transient shaping and whatever else we want. So I've done that on these tracks and here's how that sounds. And then lastly, we'll send the snare and the overhead to a reverb. We'll also put on the drum crush track, which is this track here, going through Devil Lock. I, I tweaked the settings a little bit because I didn't like the sort of distortion I was getting from that. The kick and the snare are going to that track and they are pre-effects. So here we go. And so with that kind of small amount of settings, I can move on to another track and start mixing the bass or whatever it is. So the majority of the improvement in the sound comes from the drum bus chain. Now I've got two drum bus compressors on here and they're both SSL style compressors. They're made by different companies and they sound different. So I'm gonna try to um, AB compare these for you. Uh, the T-Rex bus compressor is on first. And to me, they're pretty similar, but the townhouse compressor actually sort of, it tightens up the kick in a different way, but then the snare is a little bit different. And with the T-Rex compressor, I like the snare more, but the kick still seems a little bit long. So, you know, it might need a little bit more work, but uh, I could probably live with either one uh, at the end of the day. They, they both have a similar feel, but they sound a bit different. Pretty much using the same settings on this, one millisecond attack, uh, 0.3 second release, so 30 milliseconds. Uh, side chain uh, is both at 60, I believe. Something I really dislike about the townhouse compressor is that it has circular controls and they jump to wherever you click, where the uh, T-Rex compressor works how I expect. You have to grab the control and then move it up and down to make a, a setting change. And if you see here, if I grab anywhere on the knob, it jumps to that setting. And that can be pretty dangerous if you're grabbing the makeup gain or something like that. This is the sort of drum bus sound that I like. Let's go to this compressor and actually do a little bit too much compression and, and see how that sounds. Keep it on the four to one ratio, the attack faster. So it's cutting more of the transient, reacting faster. And I'll actually just turn off that reverb for now. Turning up the makeup gain. So 
So obviously that's way too much. And if we go with an attack that is too slow, we're gonna have the opposite problem. It's, it's going to let too much of a transient through and it's not gonna feel compressed at all anymore. Uh, but that also works pretty well if you want kind of a like a really hard smack um, on that snare. So if you just listen to the snare, it does one thing that's cool, but it might not work well for everything else. For me, I tend to have it at one millisecond or three milliseconds most of the time. Uh, it kind of depends on how much is happening in those drums, um, how much of the transient is getting through. Uh, but for me, uh, about th the three millisecond seems about right. Um, honestly, somewhere in between like five milliseconds would probably be perfect, but there's other ways you can kind of make up that uh, transient loss by using transient shaping and things like that. With the release, I do the 30 millisecond or 0 0.3 second option. Um, that just seems to have a good balance of fast response uh, where it, it sounds like it's inflating the drums. Uh, it doesn't take too long for the cymbals to come back up uh, after a crash or something like that. And there's a lot less distortion than with the 0 0.1 second option. So I'll put that at uh, the fastest release time. So something like that is usually where I end up with a bus compressor. It kind of helps enhance the groove. I kind of like these compressors because they have a limited range of settings. So you, you don't have infinite options for the attack and release time. You know, you're just picking from six options. So it's not always perfect. And then you're just adjusting the social to make sure that it's right. So that's my approach. Hope this has been interesting. You can use any compressor you want. These two that I've shown here are just some that get me my result fast, and um, and that's really important to me. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. <laughs>